Club need no introduction considering all the press coverage they've had over the past few months. They recently sold out a six-night stint at London's ICA, which is indicative of their forthcoming tour to promote their new album. Oh, you know, that was September or October. Um, I mean, it's only six months ago. We've only had one record out. Um, and there hasn't really been much since then, apart from the fact that we were we were vote, we were in all the polls as the best 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 new band, you know, which was purely a reflection of the way people feel as opposed to the way the papers felt. Were you not worried in a way that then, when you had all the press adulation, that it might get out of hand? No, because I, I don't think it's any more than than a, than. than a, a lot of other bands have had, and, and, and I don't think they've necessarily suffered from it, unless they've actually started putting bad records out. Um, so, I mean, we've always been quite, um, uh, just, uh, you know, see what happens to have an attitude about it. I mean, we haven't, r really hasn't affected us in terms of, in the way we perceived ourselves and the way we, sh what we should be doing next. When you started off, did you ever imagine this was what a band was going to be all about? Yes, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think I always had my image of success for myself, personally, was, was what is happening now. Um, that it would be well received artistically and that um, it would be, it would be good, you know. I mean, that's what I always wanted. I always felt, you know, it might happen one day. Do you find that you have really manic fans or stalwart fans at all? Um, I think that, I mean, we really like our audience. It's, it's, and it may sound a peculiar thing to say, but they actually seem very rarely in fights. Um, they're extremely enthusiastic about the music. They, 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 uh, it's surprising how many of them know the songs so well. Um, when we meet them, they seem just normal people. They just seem nothing unusual about our fans at all, really. I mean, we get some strange letters, but I'm sure all groups get strange letters. Um, but nothing, I wouldn't sort of say that our fans were unusual people. Do you not have them identifying with sort of separate members of the band at all? Not yet, no. I don't think we've actually reached that stage. I think, I think, and what we... You know, I know I'm doing most of the talk, I'm doing the talking here, but I mean, we are, we do actually present ourselves as a, as a collective thing. It's not sort of like, you know, uh, image-wise, we don't want to sort of say, this is what I'm like, this is what Sun says like, this is what Sun says like. I mean, it's just a collective thing. I think people actually, so far anyway, seem to pick up on that. Um, you know, I mean, I get a lot of letters personally, but when I say a lot of letters, maybe I've had about 200 personally in the last year. I mean, it's not that many, is it? Well, how do you see as yourself as being the front person? Because I know Chris is here now. You're not saying anything, and you never tend to say anything in interviews anyway. Now, he tells me what to say. Be before Does we do the interviews, he just says that this is what you've got to say. Um, I'm only here to keep an eye on him, basically. <laughs> but you don't. It's always like you're always here, and Guy always does the talking. Yeah, it's a kind of... I mean, I, I'm basically the spokesman and the front person. And, uh, but, um... Uh, I mean, it's, I think it's good to have one person to, to represent the band. And just so long as everyone in the band feels the band is properly represented, that, that's all that matters. Because it gets complicated. I mean, we've, we've, we've done group interviews. We've sort of, we've, you know, I remember when we were in Europe and we were sort of trying to do eight interviews at the same time. And we all sat around the table, you know. And, and, and as I have written the songs, for example, a, a lot of the questions get, get pointed my way anyway. And it just becomes... Um, it's more more convenient than anything else, and and because I am fairly articulate, and uh, and I and and and, um, and do have a fairly uh, a, a sort of I think you know a good understanding of of, of how the band sounds and how it, how it should be described. It just seems to be the best way to do things. How do you handle all the sort of pop trappings in the way things like groupies and? We don't get any groupies. Oh, I'm sure you do. No, we don't, honestly. No. Don't believe that. <laughs> Have you ever had a groupie? Yeah. No. Oh, well, occasionally, you know, I mean, you know <laughs> the odd 10 or 20 in Manchester. No, I mean, we don't. We don't have that. I mean, I, I think a lot of it is, 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 I think, if you want 
to to take advantage of that side uh, of being in a the group, then you can. I mean, there are always people that will that will perceive you as something that you aren't, and, and be quite happy to sort of you know spend the night with you. And, and but I mean, generally speaking, it's just. I mean, we all. We tend, we tend to sort of, I mean, for example, after gigs, we tend to stay together as a group and, uh, you know, don't really, we, we're quite sort of, we have a close circle, you know, with the people that work with us and stuff, and we just sort of, we're not really into partying, that sort of thing. You know. It's a lie. Uh, no, I mean, it's not really, not many groupies, no. We don't put enough reverb on a record, really. <laughs> That's the biggest problem. <laughs>